Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today, we're discussing a watch launched in 2021, bright yellow dial, Rolex Oyster Perpetual 41. This is the reference 124300, 41 millimeters in 904L stainless steel. That's the diameter. It is 11.7 millimeters thick. It is 47.4 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. It is 51.2 millimeters from end link to end link, and it has a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. So it is broad and flat. Previously, Oyster Perpetuals were not made in a 41 millimeter case size. So this was the first year of that in Rolex's history. And it wears considerably larger to the point that I would recommend this watch for a wrist no smaller than 15 centimeters circumference. If your wrist is smaller than that, look for the discontinued 39 millimeter watch or go with a 36. However, it is very flat and with a domed bezel, you can see it would slide easily underneath the cuff. A comfortable watch, a broad watch, and a more significant wrist presence, both because of its size and because of its dial color than previous OP models. Now the watch, of course, harks back to the original 1933 Oyster Perpetual, nicknamed Bubbleback, because it combined the 1926 Oyster water-resistant case with the 1933 Perpetual rotor winding system, and to add the rotor, they created a bigger case back, which created the appearance of a bubble, hence Bubbleback. More important was the fact that that watch became the archetype of both the modern sports watch and the modern Rolex watch. Highly water-resistant, tough, and automatic winding. It had all of the ingredients from the first. What it didn't have at the time was 904L steel. Rolex transitioned to this during the 1980s. Rolex has its own foundry, it makes its own alloys, it makes its cases, bracelets, and clasps. And 904L steel is no harder than 316, but it is more resistant to corrosion. So like Zinn U-Boat stall, you do not need to rinse it after salt exposure. We have an Oyster three-link bracelet design. You can see it as a conforming end piece for better junction with the case. And then it has a little bit of a taper to it. The top links are satinated. The flanks are polished. You can see removable links are fixed by screws. The clasp, now polished inside, no longer media blasted as on previous generations. It has a spring-loaded lift lock latching system. So this beacon a hook, they latch together. You can't actually pull it open. You do need to unlatch it to open it. It's not a friction fit setup. New for the 2021 Oyster Perpetuals, you have this five millimeter easy link system. Previously, the OP did not get easy link, but it's a snap in, snap out, tool free adjustment system for fine tuning the fit of your watch. If you look inside the clasp, and I'll do my best to show this, there are three divots drilled inside the clasp. Using your strap tool, you can change the anchoring point of the spring bar to fine tune the fit of the watch. The case has lugs that are satinated on their top. The case is polished on its flank. You can see here we have a twin lock crown in steel. You know that because it has a little slash underneath the crown. Screw down crown, 100 meter water resistance. Here we have a polished dome style bezel. Again, to reference the history of the bubble backs, which almost always featured domed bezels. The dial is a lovely lacquered bright yellow, extremely hard to find, with white gold crown indices and hands. The idea behind making them gold is that they will not tarnish, fade, or change color over time. The dial is well loomed, to say the least. With Rolex's signature chromolite blue lumen, you can see the double loomed indices at three, six, and nine. Underneath the solid oyster case back, we have caliber 3230, bi-directional automatic winding with a 70-hour power reserve. It has hacking seconds, pivots on 31 joules. It beats weight 8 beats per second. It is a manufacturer movement, unlike the old 3230 and 3230, or I should say 3130 and 3131, the 30. 230 features a winding rotor bearing rather than the old jeweled staff, which makes the watch more shock tolerant. Returning from the 3130 and 3131 is the full balance bridge and the free sprung balance for shock tolerance. The micro Stella variable inertia nuts on the balance allow for fine adjustment that is not susceptible to shock induced timing deviation. Rolex chronometer certifies the bear movement but then cases it up, testing it in six positions so it'll run no worse than minus two plus two seconds per day when it leaves the factory. That is what the term superlative chronometer means substantively in the modern era. The hairspring is a handmade brigade over coil that helps the watch keep even 
even time in all of those tested positions, plus on your wrist. And the hairspring is made of a blue oxidized niobium zirconium alloy that is highly anti-magnetic. So this watch is shock resistant, anti-magnetic, and water resistant all at the same time. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.